Hello and welcome to today's yoga question. I'm Lizzie Lassiter in Salzburg, Austria, and joining us via audio is Judith Hansen Lassiter in San Francisco, California. Hi, Mama. Hi, Lizzie. So our topic today is what is your definition of yoga? So I was just asked, I wrote an essay for this book last year um, about the ethics of yoga and the publisher is doing an, another one in the series and asked me to write an essay about my topic is what is yoga, which is a huge and challenging but exciting topic. Um, so I wanted to pull in my nearest and dearest expert and um, ask you mom sort of to muse a little bit and talk to us about this vast practice that we're all so fascinated with, but is so hard to pin down and define. Well, the classic definition of yoga really includes two concepts, which is yoga is a state of being, a yoked, a united harmony, if you will, integration, if you will of our being, of our small, of our self, that eternal part of ourselves. It is a recognition, actually, a remembering that we are connected to the whole of the, div of the divine of existence. And that is something that we are, not something that we do. Mm. The second aspect of what yoga is, the, it is the practices associated with that uh, deep understanding, that deep knowingness, that deep recognition. And of course, what's more obvious is the most overt part of those practices, which is asana. Mm -hmm. You can't show off nonviolence. <laughs> ahimsa. Look at my ahimsa, baby. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. It's a really advanced one. Look how long I can hold it. Um, so that's something that I, I would say mourn is too strong a word, but re regret makes it sound too personal, but I'm sometimes a little sad when I see how yoga has, what the word means to people and what it means generally in the West, I believe is the lowest common denominator and not the whole, the whole meal, the whole everything, the whole picture of what it can mean in our lives. And I have this new quote, which I'd like to share. It's several sentences long. If, our dear audience can keep their attention on such a long quote. I'd like to read it to you now. That all the practices of yoga create a habit of self-reflection. So when we watch ourselves be greedy, when we watch ourselves want to wiggle away from the truth, when we're doing cobra pose, when we're doing pranayama, when we're meditating, all of these things are about becoming self-reflective and making that self-reflection a habit. Self-reflection is always about and always in the present moment. Mm. And maybe this habit of returning to the present moment is what the health benefits of yoga come from. That when we're present, we're, we're usually not anxious. It's, because anxiety is always about the future, what might happen. So when we have the habit of returning to the present, the sensations of the present moment, what's really here, that if it is a difficult situation, we're actually more present with it, but we're not anxious. Mm. So returning to the, re, using this habit of self-reflection to return to the present moment is a lifetime work. It's a lifetime work. Um, so how does that, how does that sound? I like it. I, I want you to read for us the quote all in one go without comment. All right, here we go. All the practices of yoga create a habit of self-reflection 
And self-reflection is always in the present moment. When we are in the present moment, we pay attention to our body and what it needs. We pay attention to the breath and how it reveals our emotional state. And we pay attention to the agitations of our mind and how we can forgive them and ourselves. Mm, I love it. I'm going to put that in the comments for this video so people can see it written out. Mama, before we close, maybe you have a final idea to send us off with. I want to say something you told me years ago, which I thought was quite profound. Actually, you said it in our office hours program, which is our monthly live mentorship call, which anyone can join it's for teachers and serious students. If you visit www.lassiter.yoga, you can find out more about it. But you said once, never underestimate that people can walk in the door marked hot yoga and walk out the door marked transformation. And I, I really like that idea because it reminds me not to think that I somehow own the true yoga or that my yoga is more spiritual or more profound because it's less um, sports-based these days. Um, and to remember that there are so many paths into exactly what you're describing in your quote. There are paths to uh, finding forgiveness for ourselves. Well, I'll just tell you an anecdote. When I had a job at the Y many years ago, and there was a yoga program that had just started there, and one of the perks of my job was I could take this yoga program and the classes, and I was very clear to myself, okay, I just want to do the physical part of it to help my arthritis so I can go back to dancing, which I love to do. And I want nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the spiritual part. <laughs> so I am living, breathing, teaching, walking, ex uh, example, uh, living proof that the yoga, basically, if you really want to know, is magic. It works as magic on you yeah. in, in innumerable ways. And that magic, of course, doesn't work if you don't do it. If you're not about developing this habit of self-reflection, it won't work. But never, never underestimate the power of awareness to bring us to our true self. Love, Mama. Love, Mama. Yeah, I would love to live in a world in which every person, especially our politicians and public figures spend 15 minutes a day in a habit of self-reflection. So because that's the world I want to live in, that's my commitment to do my own practice at least 15 minutes a day. And mine too. So may I end us with, may we live like the Lotus at home in the muddy water. Muddy water. Namaste. Namaste mama.